Hi and welcome to RC Models and this the second in the series of videos which I've been doing on converting the tipper trailer that comes in the tractor set to radio control. In the last video if you've seen it what we did was we put an N20 motor in there and a thread made from a coach bolt. In this video I intend to put in some micro switches in order to prevent overrun, a switch to control it all with and a servo to move the switch. These are all readily available and inexpensive components which are easy enough to find on eBay or Hobby King. I've run a servo extension lead from the receiver through to the back of the tractor. All of the brooder conversions which I've done so far have actually got this little universal tow hitch which goes with the trailer. On the transmitter what I've done is I've set the switch to button A which is this one here and it's on three position so that when the switch is thrown we can either have it in one direction, the other direction or straight up. Before going any further I just wanted to do a quick bit of theory to help anybody trying to follow this with the wiring up and apologies to those who are expert in electronics, this is just my way of explaining it. So this part of the diagram here represents the switch and it's got six terminals on the bottom and you've got the three positions. This part of the diagram here represents the micro switch. How this switch works is when it's pushed over to this side here, the centre terminal here is live with the terminal there, the one here is live with the terminal there. So that is the position that I'm showing in the diagram. What I intend to do is to solder the battery connections to the centre and then solder one pole of the motor to the end here and the other one on the other side so that you can see that in this state you have got positive going to the motor but the negative side of the motor connected over to this side here which hasn't got any connection to the center nothing's going to run so in order to get power to the negative terminal on the motor we know that these lower two connectors here are live so what I've got is I've got that running round through the micro switch which when it's in its up position is passing current between the two end terminals it comes round and it's linking up to the motor so that's going to complete the circuit when the micro switch is triggered like so this connection is cut and the motor will stop running I haven't shown the other side because it's exactly the same and the diagram would look too confusing but essentially when the switch is moved to the to the other side this terminal here is live with positive current so the motor will be going the other way and then you've got the same sort of arrangement with the micro switch in order to take the negative current from here and effectively via the micro switch bring it to the other side of the motor hopefully that makes sense and if it doesn't perhaps when I show you the wires being soldered in it might make a little more sense now in order that I can test the system as I go along I'm using one of these Y leads which I've got quite a lot of from radio control car lighting sets and one end of it is going to go in the back of the tractor this connector here will go with the servo quickly test it it's good and then what I'm hoping is that I can use the power feed from the receiver to power the trailer otherwise it'll have to have a separate battery just cut about that because this these plugs can be useful actually before I cut it I'll just turn it off because I don't want to short anything well this white cable won't be needed because we're not having a signal wire going to the power so I'll just get rid of that just as a preliminary check I'm going to see what happens if I try and connect it up it 
that seems to be working and nothing seems to be twitching so I think that I'm probably going to be okay using the receiver on the tractor as my power source. I'm just noting the fact that when I put positive to positive and negative to negative on the motor that causes it to lift. So the next thing really that I want to think about is the physical positioning of stuff. So I'm not going to do the soldering yet because I know what's going to happen with the wires and I want to get them the right length etc. We're going to need to get the switch inside and the servo such that it can move the switch and also fit the micro switches so that they switch on and off in the right position as the arm moves backwards and forwards. I think I'm going to start with the switch so I'll just take this off. I really don't want to be doing this too many times because I'm nervous that the plastic will wear out and snap but so far it's been okay. It's that. Take off this. This I'll, I'll leave in position but I think that I'll just move this down to the end. What I'm thinking of doing is putting the servo somehow in like that and then mounting the switch about here so that it's coming up through that area there. Before I do anything with the switch I'm going to need some way of moving it backwards and forwards and what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole in this so that I can put one of my servo control rods with the Z bend in to pull it backwards and forwards. So I'll start by doing that. Right, that seems to be a hole. I was a bit worried I won't be able to do that. Next thing is to mount it in here. The hole need for that is about 8mm, but I'm going to go through first making a pilot hole. Actually, this is a 6.5mm drill bit. So let's try that first. That seems to be absolutely fine. And it's sticking up that much. I think that I'd probably want to mount it quite a bit lower. I'll go and find the nuts for this and then I'll be back. Right, so that's that in and actually when it's in it feels less different than I thought it did. I don't think it's a bad idea just to loosen it up a little bit. I'm sure it'll get looser over time but I really don't want the servo binding at the end of its travel. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to measure the distance that the hole actually travels. So, so if I set the centre at one centimetre there, it seems to go about three and a half mil that way, three and a half millimetres that way. So the total travel is only about seven millimetres. The reason that I did that is that the servo being so small is going to be quite sensitive to any strain being put upon it and so I want the servo movement to be very similar to this distance here because that way I'm going to get the most torque out of the servo. Having done some work on this overnight and in the interest of keeping the video to a sensible length I've done one or two more bits and I'll just take you through those. So first of all I've mounted one of those Hobby King servos and to do that I use some double sided foam tape and a couple of tie wraps. I did drill a small hole here and I'll just flip it over so that you can see how I've put the tie wraps through the holes in the servo just to keep everything in place. Having measured the throw of the switch I selected the third hole out on the servo arm and then using my trusty Z bender which I seem to use rather a lot made up this short wire so that when the servo was at the neutral position the switch was at the centre. 
on the servo arm I found that the third hole out was about the best one to use and then I used the servo travel function on the transmitter to get rid of everything so that it worked properly. When I was testing it I was using a multimeter and I'll just go through that process quickly. So when it's put in circuit testing mode it makes a buzzing noise if you've if you've got contact. So I'll just plug the radio control in for a moment and when I move the A the A button you can see how the switch is moving between its positions and then when I was testing it in the neutral position testing between these two contacts these two these two and these two you can hear how there's nothing in the up position contact there contact there nothing there nothing there and then in the down position contact there contact there nothing nothing so we know the whole thing's working and I had to keep adjusting it until the servo wasn't buzzing either at the center or at the ends which meant that nothing was under strain so the next thing which I did was I glued in a couple of small plastic plates here, just a couple of bits of scrap plastic card, and I've mounted the micro switches to them. Now, in here you should be able to see that I've actually put small two millimeter screws in the bottom holes, but the but I haven't drilled any holes or anything for the top yet. The reason that I did that was because I may need to adjust things later and I won't put those in until the very last stage. The other thing which I did was I drilled a one and a half millimeter hole through here and you can see how it's just missing this at the lowest point and it was quite hard to draw straight so I just ended up straightening this bar and I'm just using a servo rod with a thread on it because it was easier to to put in and again this can be bent slightly if I need anything for adjustment and in order to get them in the right place I actually put this top on and I kept experimenting until at the very top of the movement you get a click and similarly at the bottom before the nut hits the end now the other good thing about only putting a single screw in is that it is going to give me the ability to move these round so that I can get to this thing for the soldering in a minute. The next thing to do is to return to my wiring diagram. I've just added a couple of other things to, to help me follow this while I'm putting it together. So I know that this one here is going to be the micro switch at the bottom. This is going to be the micro switch at the highest point. When the switch lever is over here, the bed will be traveling down and when it's here, it will be traveling up. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to follow this diagram wire by wire and hopefully everything will work. Now, if you do this methodically one wire at a time, there are six terminals, there are eight wires to do. It shouldn't be too difficult and hopefully things will go right the first time. And that is it for the soldering with a bit of luck. I hope that this is going to work because I've never done that kind of circuit before and it is all a bit theoretical but it seemed to make sense at the time. Right, let's just give it its first test. Plug in the tractor, turn on the radio control. So if I push the up switch
that seems to be good and if it was to hit the end it's going to stop and then if I go the other way so that's neutral then if I go the other way the only way to really know is to put the lid on so let's try that let's just try the up quickly Perfect. So the last thing I need to do apart from tidy up one and two wires, drill holes to set the angles for the micro switches and put some two mil screws in there. I'll just do those and then I'll be back. And there we have it. Time for a quick field test, I think. Well, all in all, I think that this has been a pretty successful project. It's been very enjoyable to do. There have been quite a few technical challenges to get over for both the tractor and for the trailer. I'm very pleased with the way that the trailer's worked out and I was quite surprised that my electronics worked the first time I tested them. I think that drawing a circuit diagram is probably the way to go. In terms of components, the trailer probably cost less than £10 to do. The servo I think was about £3, the motor was about £3 also. The micro switches, they're actually only pence each and I think that the coach bolt, I think I paid 30p for that. So not expensive conversion, quite time consuming but actually very satisfying and I've learned a whole bunch of things along the way in terms of another method for making something move and to get the end stops on. I am going to get around to doing trucks fairly soon, although it seems that I've started on the excavator and I'm pondering some stuff on that as well. If you are not already subscribed, perhaps you want to now, there are going to be more Bruder videos coming up and actually there are quite a few which I've already done which you might like to have a look at. If you've got any ideas or thoughts that you want to share, please post them in the comments section below. I always like seeing these and I'm very happy to answer any questions and even happier to get advice. I hope you've enjoyed the video and if you have please give it a thumbs up and until the next time thank you very much for watching.